My fault. <laughs> it is good to be here today to give praise to the Lord for His goodness and His greatness that He has placed upon each and every one of us. When we consider all that the Lord has done for us, amen, we should say thank you, Lord, every day of our life. And be thankful and be submissive to the extent that we would say, Lord, whatever you want me to do today, I'll do it. Amen. And not have to be begged to do it, but be honored to fulfill his purpose and his will. Thank you, Brother Lane, for giving us this opportunity to come and to minister the word of the Lord. As he said, I take it very serious too. Amen. Because it's a very grave responsibility to be in God's house and to stand here. Because it's woe unto me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's an honor to be with he and his wife. They're very special people. And we love them very much. It's an honor to be with my daughter and her family. We love them very much. It's good to have my wife and two of her sisters and a friend of theirs here with us today. And all of you, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. This is a day that the Lord hath made, and I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. You see, this is my opportunity to come into his house and worship him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you see, tomorrow when I'm out yonder, amen, we don't know what's going to take place and what's going to happen. But here today, this is God's house, and we're wrapped around with loving people, amen, that loves God, and a God that said that when you come together, I'll be there, I'll bless you, I'll be in your midst, amen. So he's here today to touch us. Let's look into the Word of God. If you have your Bible, turn with us to the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 7 through 9. Amen. Verses 7 through 9. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word? Haggai said, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in the place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to minister your word. I believe in my heart, Father, that the church today is on the verge of a great revival. But I also believe, Lord, that the devil is doing everything that he possibly can to hinder every individual from receiving and from being a part of what you are about to do in this world today. I pray, God, that you will give me a special and a holy anointing this morning. And that that you have laid upon my heart, Lord, will so penetrate the heart and the mind of every individual here today. God, that we'll begin to look up and we'll begin to look around us realizing, Lord, that something wonderful is about to happen, something great is about to take place, and I better get up to par. I better get in or get out or I'm going to get run over. Hallelujah. Because, Lord, this is your place, and we trust you for that that you're about to do in Jesus' name. And amen. Praise the Lord. You might be seated. The words of Haggai basically comes 
It's not something that we should just take literal. Because the fact is, there is something that you and I, we have to do in order to see the glory of God come forth and empower the church as God desires to empower the church today. As and most of us most likely have been down by the seashore and we've watched the waves come in and we've watched the waves go out. And uh, it's a fascinating thing and, uh, but I'm sure that it's a very destructive thing when hurricanes begin to take place and, and uh, the waters begin to overflow the banks of the ocean and uh, the banks of the rivers, the creeks, and so forth. But I'm believing that God is going to do something in this day and hour. I believe that a revival is on the horizon. Amen that the streams are going to be filled and, uh, and, and the, the ocean is going to give forth and it's going to be such an impact upon our world in which we live today that the Bible says that there will be a lot of people that even though they may see it, that they will not believe it. Amen. But nevertheless, God is doing something uh, in preparation, getting us ready for that moment and that hour. The thing about ocean is like a revival. We see the waves. It's a fascinating thing to look and see the waves come in. But the thing about it is, as the waves come in, there is a wave that is going out. Amen. And, and oftentimes um, it hinders the force of the wave that is coming in uh, by the wave that is going out. One era that, 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 is, uh, that has been, amen, seemingly as it begins to go out, tries to hinder the next era in which God has got in his divine providence to bring forth uh, unto his people. And so it is. It, it, it's, uh, it, it does not have the impact of that it would have had. Amen. But nevertheless, I believe that God is able to move by His Spirit that there is going to come a mighty force of God and a mighty revival. Amen. That the walls of the seas will not be able to contain. Amen. The overflow of God's presence and the overflow of God's Spirit and God's power that he desires to give unto us today. God had announced to Joel that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters would prophesy. Amen. And your young men would dream, would, would, would have visions and your old men would dream dreams. Amen. You see, I'm at the place where I dream dreams. Amen. But nevertheless, amen. We have the younger ones that sees the vision of the Lord. Amen. Not only would he pour out his spirit, but Israel at this particular time was in Babylon. It was a time of judgment. It was a time of spiritual drought. But according to Joel, a rain was going to come. Amen. And it would be such a force. Amen. That whosoever will basically would be affected by this wonderful power of God that God was bringing upon the face of the earth today. It was going to be a spiritual renewal for Israel and all so it was going to be a time of restoration. Ezekiel, amen, he was energized with special insight at this particular time. Daniel was giving, given a revelation that would reach to the end of the world. God had delivered him, amen, in the lion's den. God had brought down Nebuchadnezzar, the king, until he come to the reality. He come to the place that he realized 
the divine reality of God. God help us this day and hour. Amen. That it would not take, amen, seven years to be like an ox or a cow. Amen. But it would be a time that we could recognize, amen, the reality of an almighty God. That God is the baby of this thing. Or God is the, amen, the DNA. His DNA is in this. Amen. And what God is about to do, amen, nothing can stop it. But it will accomplish God's Will. God is supernaturally. Had Judge Belshazzar. Remember the handwriting on the wall. Your kingdom is divided. You're through. Amen. The Persian king had given permission to. Nehemiah, because his heart was touched because of the broken down walls of Jerusalem. Amen. He went before the king. His countenance was saddened. Amen. Because of what was taking place and what was going on. The walls had been torn down. They were only at the mercy of God. Nehemiah goes before the king. The king looks at him and said, What's wrong with you? He said, I'm concerned about the church. Amen. I'm concerned about the people of God because the walls are torn down. And it's amazing, church, that here was a Persian king, amen, that fulfilled the will of God for a specific time, but yet would have somehow or another compassion, amen, to a man, and even offer, amen, wood and so forth, trees and so forth, to fulfill and to accomplish the goal of to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, amen. And what a joy it was, amen. But I wonder today if there's enough of us, amen, that could somehow or another, amen, look around us and see what the devil is trying to do to the church world. I wonder if there's enough of us today, amen, that, have go, that will go before an almighty God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and say, God, amen, I'm concerned about what's taking place in the church world today. The walls are being torn down amen and the people are left desolate and therefore the enemy can come in and he can play havoc with what my people we need a burden even as Nehemiah had it was a time that God was going to do a work not by power not by mind but by my spirit, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The human instrumentality will never get the job done, amen. But it'll take a divine intervention by the power of the Holy Ghost and by the power of God to get things done, amen, hallelujah. You see, then the tide went out. 400 years of silence. No voice of the prophet. Amen. Nothing. And all of a sudden, amen, on the Judean hills, an angel cries out, amen, that a Savior is born. Hallelujah. And we find that the era of Christ and the apostolic age had come. John the Baptist came filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb, saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for John. You see, he preached the coming of the Messiah and the era of being filled with the Holy Ghost and the fire of God. Amen. 
The Bible said that he came in the spirit of Elijah. Amen. Spiritual waters became troubled. Amen. As the as the uh, people begin to recognize uh, that something is taking place. Um, amen. He was baptizing in Jordan and a man walked down from the, on the hillside uh, and John looked up and said, Behold uh, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Um, Jesus came in their midst uh, and nobody recognized him uh, but John did. Amen. He recognized who Jesus was uh, and what his purpose purpose was, was being there for he was baptized by John he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights the Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit hallelujah we mean we need meaning men and women of God full of the Spirit. Full of the Spirit. Full of the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The next three and a half years. Amen. He left a trail of miracles and it followed him wherever he went. Words of grace flowed from his lips. Compassion was seen on his face. Tenderness was in his touch. Forgiveness was his mission. Whoever he touched was healed and delivered by the great power of God. The Jewish establishment became concerned about the popularity of this man called Jesus. And it began to jeopardize and threaten their establishment. So therefore they devised a plan to crucify him, to get him out of the way, to stop him. And they thought that once he was crucified, amen, that basically that would end it. But it did not end it, church. Amen. It only be began something Else, amen, because Jesus had spoken to them and said, It's expedient that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter, the paraclete, amen, hallelujah, will not come. But if I go, I will send him to you, amen. Praise the Lord and thank God. God, amen, 120 walked into the upper room, amen, and there tarried 10 days and 10 nights until the day of Pentecost, until Holy Ghost fire came down from the heaven, amen, and instilled upon every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gave them the utterance. Samaria was filled by the preaching of Stephen. Amen. A whole city gave heed to those things. Or Philip. Philip preached and gave heed to those things that Philip had preached because he preached Jesus. Peter and John came from general headquarters and laid hands on the believers and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This reached the Antioch. There they were called Christians for the first time. The whole Roman Empire was flooded, but the tide went out. Amen. They tell us that this Pentecostal experience that fell in Acts 2 and 4 only lasted some 300 years. And then in the centuries to follow, only sporadic times was the Spirit seen or witnessed. But then began the rain to fall again in the pre-Reformation area through the ministries of Huss and Wycliffe because people were hungry and they were thirsty and they were ready to receive the goodness of God. They were tired of the same old, same old. 
Amen. You see, if you have a need of God and you're doing the same thing that you've always done, then you're going to receive the same old thing that you receive. You've got to do something different if you want something different. Amen. And then all of a sudden the birth pangs of the Reformation came. Amen. Through the ministries. Amen. And the thing about it, old landmarks were discovered. Men like Luther and Calvin and Zwigli. Amen. They brought a restoration to the church. Justification by faith. The scripture as the only absolute ruler of authority. And the priesthood of every believer. Amen. My, it began to change. The sea wall was threatened. Amen. The waters was rising. Revival was beginning to come. A wave of justification. Amen. By faith began to wash the shores that had been polluted. Amen. By a theology, the, theology of salvation by works. Amen. But then the tide rose and fell. But all of a sudden a revival with men like Finney and Whitefield, Wesley, Moody and others. They begin to still energize the church at the, clo at the close of the 1800s and the beginning of the new century. God began to pour out the latter rain upon his church. A Pentecostal renewal. Amen began to come. The latter rains were really falling. Pentecostal denominations were born. The Lord now justified the church with the ministry of Luther. He sanctified the church with the ministry of Wesley. And he energized the church, amen, with a Pentecostal renewal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the church should stand today, amen, as a force, none like none other on the face of this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because he says, I give unto you power, amen, and nothing by any means shall hurt you or harm you, amen. The devil does not have any power over the child that is full of the Holy Ghost and full of the Spirit of God, amen. Why? Because God knew, amen, that we were going to need it. The first wave was the Pentecostal renewal. The holiness churches. People that should have been behind. Amen. This wonderful experience became the greatest resistors to what was taking place and what was going on. The second wave was a charismatic movement. After the Half century, the charismatic movement came on the scene. Amen. The outgoing peak of the Pentecostal re was renewal was met with the incoming of the charismatic movement. Some of the greatest resistors to the charismatic movement was the classical Pentecostal church. Amen. But Brother Cheney, we didn't go along with all of that that the charismatics did. did. I didn't either. Amen. But there's one thing about it, church. Preachers begin to preach about wildfire until they just about killed the real fire. Amen. I tell you, we can handle a little bit of wildfire, but I want the genuine. I want the real thing. Amen. I, I want that that was promised to me by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want a, amen, that unction from the Holy One of Israel. Amen. That transform. Amen. A country boy. Amen. From South Georgia. Amen. That was so embarrassed that he would not even hardly talk to anyone anybody. Amen. He will transform me into a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Pentecostal revival, it produced millions. Amen. Who had experienced Jesus in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. 
This move would be the means to invade every denomination, regardless of what it was, Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Catholic, amen. There was no wall that could have been erected that would stop the inflow of this Pentecostal experience, amen. Hallelujah, Colosseums field, gymnasiums field, amen, football fields and basketballs, amen, and all of those places, they were filled with seekers, amen, hallelujah, and God was moving and God was blessing in such a special way. The Spirit of God spiritually pollinated other churches. But this inflow of God's Spirit and God's power. Amen. There was turbulent waters. Amen. The rain was falling. Swollen rivers was at a flood stage. And what a mighty outpouring. Amen. Now, to the meat of my sermon. Amen. Why or what would cause us to miss, amen, this divine move of the power of God? I've got seven reasons this morning that I want to bring to us, amen, that will help us to understand that we must not miss the third wave of the Spirit. We must not miss what God is about to do. Amen. Or else we too will be like others. We will only be, uh, amen, something of figment, uh, amen, of somebody's imagination of what used to be. Amen. They say the shakers, they used to be a people. They danced. Uh, amen. And they, 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 but, but they only lasted about 200 years. And then all of a sudden they were gone. And they, they said that they, you could go to some of their churches. Um, and some of their churches, they had, they had ballet dancers that was, um, that was trained. Um, amen. And they would, they would say, this is where the pianist, uh, amen, sat down and played. Um, they would have the pulpit and say this is where the preacher used to stand and preach the word of God. And they would have the ballet dancers, amen, that here, amen, was the type of dance that they used to do. Here was where all the musicians were, amen. But the thing about it, church, it was only a figment of somebody's imagination that once was, amen. We must not become a church that once was. We are a church that is is and shall be if we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ in these last days. The first thing is no discernment. Amen. Matthew 16, 1 through 3, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came and desired, amen, that he would give them a sign. Can you imagine standing before Jesus Christ, amen, wondering, give us a sign, give us a sign and we'll believe you, amen. It's like coming to church and saying, amen, give us a sign and we'll know that God is here. He said, oh, you hypocrites. Amen. He didn't beat around the bush with them. He said you can discern, amen, the signs of the sky and so forth. But he was standing right in front of them. No greater sign the Father could have given. Amen. Except Jesus Christ. Amen. And he was right there in front of them. God give us men and women with discernment that cannot discern just the face of the sky. 
but they can discern, amen, in the house of God, amen. Give us people, amen, that can understand, amen, that it doesn't take, amen, an overflow in the service, but just a gentle small breeze, amen, will cause lands, amen, being erected toward heaven, amen, and our hearts being touched by God. We pray, Holy Ghost, move. He's already moving. We say, Holy Ghost, come down. He's already here. Amen. He's just trying to get somebody, amen, with enough of Spirit of God about them and enough of discernment to detect when he's there. It don't take but just a little breeze. Just a little breeze. Amen. And he's there. Hallelujah. Luke 19, 40, 41 through 44. He said, if you'd, have, if, you'd have been, if you'd have been here, basically. Hallelujah. If thou would have known. Amen. If you'd have just known. If you'd have just known. But he said, because of it, because of your lack of ability to discern, your enemies shall cast a trench about thee, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. The pastor was alluding to the fact that Christ is coming. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, what happened there was they mistook, mistook the blessing. For the curse. Amen. And the thing about it is, we must not in this day and hour that we live mistake the blessing for the curse. Amen. Because God is on the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke 13, 34, and 35. Jesus cried out, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are set unto you, how oft would I have gathered you together as a hen doth gather her chickens. Amen. But you would not. Amen. He said you would not. Why? He said, I would love to just put my arms around you. I would just love to pull you together as a body and really show you my love. Amen. But somehow or another, he could not get the unity together enough. Amen. To bind the people together so he could do so. I remember several months ago, tongues and interpretation, it was to unify the body. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Amen. Was that God? Amen. Was that just a figment of somebody's imagination? Or was that God? God was trying to get the body to become unified. To stand together, amen. Why? Because together we stand, divided we fall. But he desires for us to take a place. Are we like the sons of Isaac are? Only to know what others ought to do. In First Chronicles 12, 32. Because they were given the insight, amen. To determine the seasons for Israel, amen. You see, a shepherd, he determines the seasons, amen, about his sheep and what to do and where to carry them and how to, how to protect them and how to carry them from one place to another so that they could be fed and be blessed and to be touched, amen. In Hebrews 5, 14, we are challenged to have our senses exercised to discern, amen. God has given us five senses. But mothers have the sixth then. It's called intuition. They know when little Johnny has got the kitten and about to baptize him in the commode. <laughs> Amen. They have that intuition. Just a feeling to know something is not right. And they go check on the child to see what's taking place and what's going on. It's like a little saying that I've used before. Amen. 
about John and the cat. There we go, Johnny again. John and the cat. Amen. Johnny got out there and he had his foot down on the cat's tail. His mom looked out the window. Said, Johnny, quit pulling that cat's tail. He looked down, scratched his head, and said, I'm not pulling. I'm just standing on it. He's doing all the pulling. Amen. What are you saying, Brother Cheney? I'm saying that it's a time to take a stand. Amen. Let the world, let the world do all the scratching. Let the world do all the pulling. Amen. Just take a stand and stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, with the whole armor of God. Amen. So that we might be able, amen, to withstand all the fiery darts of, of the enemy. The devil has placed, amen, a, 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 a pay place on you. It's called a bullseye. And he's doing everything that he can to kill you. The pastor already alluded to it. The thief cometh not but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But he said, but I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. But... If the, if the thief does not kill, steal, or destroy, then his next step is to make you less effective. Amen. Less effective. If he can get us to where that we can't discern when the Holy Ghost comes in. And the power of God's Spirit comes down. Hallelujah. And we miss that little gentle breeze of His Spirit. God help us. God help us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Secondly, inflex, inflexible. Amen. We find in St. Luke chapter 5, 37 and 38. The Bible says, no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles, and, and it be spilled, and the bottles perish. Oh, when I thought about the bottles perish, my mind went, amen. How many people, how many people will have to perish, amen, because of failure, to conform to the will of God. Amen. He said it's a detriment that you take new wine and put it with the old, in old bottles. Why? Because the wine skins, amen, they have basically uh, rigid themselves to the extent, uh, amen. And he said, don't pour out the, the old wine. Don't discard it just because you have the new wine. But just don't pour them together. Because the new wine is still moving. The Bible says don't look upon wine when it turneth itself about. Amen. When it's still fermenting. Amen. Because it's expanding. The old wine skins will burst. And you don't take and pour out the old wine. Why? Amen. Because basically I don't, I don't know anything about it and do not care to know. Amen. But basically I've seen them on television other places and they'll look back and they'll say I want a such and such date and it'll be a hundred years ago or something like that. Amen. And they, they'll say Amen. They want that. Why? Because it, it is mellow. Amen. It's mellow. So what God is saying here to us today, church, is that we must not discard the, the old wine. We must leave it in the old bottles. We must take the new wine, amen, the sweetness of the Spirit because there's, there's people today, amen, they get excited we all worship differently. But 
the old has mellowed. Amen. But here comes the new person with new energy and new empowerment. Amen. And they need a place. They need a place. And thank God for the young people. But don't discard the old just because there's new ones. Amen. Because the young, they like the sweetness. Amen. And they like the freshness of the new wine. Don't you remember when the Holy Ghost came? Hallelujah. And how refreshing it was and how, how great it was. Hallelujah. So the thing about it is, just because the shape of the wineskins is different doesn't mean that we dismiss them, the old or the new. We are not, if we are not flexible church, one or the other or both will be broken. Amen. We must be flexible. The third thing is, the reason that we may miss this third wave of God's Spirit is because we're not hungry. Amen. You said, Brother Cheney, it's after 12 o'clock. I'm hungry now. Amen. That's not the hunger that I'm talking about. Amen. In Proverbs 27 and 7, amen. The fool hates the honeycomb. Amen. The fool hates the honeycomb. Amen. You see, the church is full today but not of the things of God. Amen. It is full of junk food religion. Amen. Of junk food theology. It is full of self-serving doctrines. It is full of people intoxicated with self trying to find a way to make Christianity serve them. People try to appease their own guilt. By singing songs that uplift, special music that inspires, creative doctrine that excites, and a 10-minute sermon that doesn't offend anyone. Amen. But you know something, church? Amen. I'm different from other preachers. Amen. The thing about me is, God gave me a message this morning. Amen. I didn't come to get inspiration from you. I got inspiration before I got here. Amen. I was inspired before I ever come. Amen. So I'm not here looking for inspiration. I'm here to deliver a message. Amen. And it's woe unto me if I do not deliver that. But the thing about it is the church has become like a religious car wash. You go up. You put your quarter in, amen, and you get a quick wash and you're ready to go. The church has become like the Pharisees that have looked, they look like life, but the Bible said that they're full of dead men's bones, amen. You say, Brother Cheney, are you talking about us only if the shoe fits? Amen. I'm here to preach to us to let us know that there are some things if we don't, if we do not, amen, if we are not careful, we'll miss what God is about to do. Because Matthew 6, 33, amen, he teaches us and tells us that he will bless us, amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these other things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. Too full of self. Too full of the world. Too full of sin. Give me ten more minutes. Amen. Fourthly, shallow worship. Amen. Shallow worship. Psalms 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? 
My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Amen. Basically that is saying while they continually ask me, Where is thy God? When I remembered these things, I poured out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites, from the, from the hill of Mazar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All of thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Amen. Seems like that he's saying, when I read that, I'm a deer hunter. And I can see the deer, amen, as he crosses over the hilltop. And I can hear the sound of the dogs in the distance. Amen. Amen. They're relentless. The deer is thirsty. He hears the rumbling of the water in the valley. If he could just take just a moment, amen, and stop and quench his thirst, amen, he could, he could go on with added strength, but the pressure behind is pushing him forward. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after the O God. David had, had seen that before, amen. How long has it been? That we really had a hunger. Amen. That we really opened up and really worshiped God. Amen. You see, he's not an object. He's real. He's real. Worship is not simply for the good times. Amen. It's our power source. Amen. If we don't worship, we'll grow, amen, weak. And we will not have the spiritual sustenance that we need. Amen. And then fifthly, a lack of prophetic insight. Amos 3 and 7 says, The Lord will do nothing except he reveal unto the servants, the prophets. We recognize many of the offices, the pastor, the evangelist, the teachers. Amen. But somehow or another, we fail to recognize, amen, the voice of the prophet. People are, being, people are speaking today, amen, throughout our world about the coming. You've heard one this morning, amen. Things that are taking place around our world, amen. Somebody is trying to, to let us know, hey, something is on the horizon. Something is about to take place. Something is going on. You better get ready. You better get right. Amen. We must not miss the voice of the prophet. The sixth thing is inactivity. 1 Kings 18 and 41. Elijah, he experienced the season of drought. Then he experienced the season of rain. And he got up. Amen. And he ran before the chariot. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? Because God had a work for him to do. Amen. It, it was easy for him to stay over there, amen, and be fed and be watered, amen. But all of a sudden, he looked and it was, it, it was going, it was going away, amen. It, it was not there anymore. There was just a trinkle, amen, in the little stream that was behind him, amen. The ravens no longer brought flesh and food in the morning and in the evening, amen. And all of a sudden, he begins to move out, and he goes and finds himself in a cave, amen. And the Bible says that fire came out, but God wasn't in the fire. Amen. There was an earthquake, but God wasn't in it. Amen. And all of a sudden, there was a still, small voice, and he wrapped this mantle over his face. Amen. And God began to speak to him. Amen. He thought his life was over. Amen. But God began to bless and move in his life, and he went forward to fulfill that. Amen. There's many sitting here this morning. You might say, Brother Cheney, my, my, my life is over. Amen. But I want to tell you something. I pray that 
that God will give you once again. Amen. Will re-energize you to the extent that you'll realize there's still work to be done. And then lastly, Smollett comes to the piano. A lack of intimacy. Amen. A lack of intimacy. Esther, she prepared herself one whole year for one night with the king. Every day she bathed herself in spices, perfumes. Amen. It was just like the priests, the preachers. Amen. Those that were anointed. Every time they anointed themselves, they would walk through the multitude. The fragrance went before them. Amen. And Esther spent a whole year preparing herself just for one night with the king. Amen. Intimacy. Amen. The church, the altars are crying out. Give us children. Give us children. Amen. Rachel cried out and said, give me children lest I die. Amen. She wanted to be blessed. But you see, it takes intimacy to bring forth children into the world. Amen. Naturally, it takes intimacy. It takes a man and it takes a woman. But intimately, intimacy, amen, with God and an individual. We need that time, amen, that we really learn who He is, amen, and what He is doing and become a part of His plan to fulfill His purpose. Some of you may have known this, but some may not have. But there are women in our world today who basically, they long for children they long to become pregnant but the thing about it is the, they tell us that their abdomen amen will literally swell because there is certain such a, a fervency of desiring children that her abdomen will literally swell because she wants to become pregnant so bad. Amen. And my prayer is, God, give us people in the church. Give us people in the church that will, that will desire an intimate relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. In such of a way, amen, that somehow or another, that sons and daughters will be born into the kingdom of God. Where are the children today? Amen. Where are the children? Where are the young children? Where are the young saints? Amen. There's so much that is taking place. Amen. And there's a lack of intimacy. We must pray. God, touch me again. Give me a love for you, Lord like I've never had before. Amen. And if you'll do that, and if you allow what I said this morning take place in your life, start seeking God for discernment. Seek for a prophetic insight. Amen. Let your worship be more than just a shallow hallelujah. Spend time with God. There's a song that says that she has her father's eyes. Amen. They never could say too much that Millet was like me. 
some ways she is. But Junior, everybody would tell me, I can tell he's your son. Amen. Isn't it wonderful when we can walk into Walmart or other places and somebody can walk up to us and says, I know you know him. You got your father's eyes. You got your father's eyes. You've been with the father. You've been with the son. You've been with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. God touch us today. Touch us today.